get walking and anytime. Okay, my name is Dave Coron. I grew up here on this farm and uh, farmed with my dad. And before that, my great grandfather farmed first. He got here in 1835. Then my grandfather ran the farm. And then I started in partnership with my dad in 1970 when I graduated high school. And then he retired in about 74, and my brother and I went in partnership. But yeah, I've been here pretty much my whole life. And my dad was his whole life, my grandpa and great grandfather. And my great grandfather came from Greenbrier County, which was then uh, Virginia, now it's West Virginia. So he traveled a long ways to get here in 1835, got here on October 16th, and right before winter. So I'm not sure if that was a good time to come, but he stayed here and did a good job. We were very lucky and fortunate. He, did, he started it out and continued doing a good job, and hopefully we kept up our reputation and stayed with it. So where are you taking us to? Well, we're heading down to Dairy Barn right now where we milk cows, my brother and I, and well, my dad too. We're down there every morning at five o'clock, and five o'clock in the afternoon we're milking them. Twice a day you milk cows, and didn't matter if it's Christmas day or what, you're, you're doing it 365 days a year. So we'll show you where we spent most of our time a lot of times we be pulling a calf like at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, too. It's just part of the job. But, uh, yeah, we're coming to the south end of Dairy Barn here now. And uh, the center of this barn was built in 1875, and there were additions put on after that. Okay, so now I'm... And anytime. Okay, now we're inside the Dairy Barn, and you can see right here we have the cupolas that we're, we're on the roof. Right now we're in the process of putting a new roof on. This one needs some repair work done to it. But the cupola is used for ventilating the barn. Air can come in or go out, whatever it's needed. Helps take the odors out too. And uh, they're always important. Every roof has, has uh, vents on them. And that's what the, these are going to get restored, repainted, and put back up. So when the barn and roof is done, it should be done in about two, three weeks. So it's Do you know if this was original equipment? I don't know on that. I. Uh, they've been here a long time. You know, I was born in 52, so they've been here since I've been alive, but the original section of the barn was over here. It was built in 1875. So there were probably different cupolas on then. I think at one time, lightning struck one of the cupolas because there were wood then, and it started barn fire. My dad always told that story. Ever since then, he always had lightning rods put on every barn we had. He's a big believer in lightning rods after that experience. So uh, look at it. cows. Anytime. Hey, this section of the barn right here is the original barn in 1875. Before 1875, there was another barn somewhere out in other areas, but they usually do use that barn, build a new barn, and then take down the other barn and use the lumber and nails and all that for, for building the new section once they got going with it. Now this, this original section, 1875, you see there's still logs in the ceilings up here. So that's the old part. And in addition, put on on the south end, and in the middle after that, and the very north end was added in 1915. So that's the newest section down there, but 1915, of course, is more than 100 years ago. So I can't say it's that new. And then uh, we milk cows with what they call a stanchion barn system. Every, both sides had stanchions on it. Cows would come in go in, they, they knew their own place, they went the same place every time, they had the right amount of feed for them. The more milk they gave, the better feed they got, the better quality feed. I mean, they all got feed, but some were dry, waiting to have their calf. Once they had a calf, they started milking again. And we used to keep about 50 cows in here most of the time. And when the calves were born, we kept them here. And a cow usually had one calf every year, and once they, uh, once they have a calf, they start producing milk. Six days before they're going to have a calf, you quit milking them, so they have a little rest period. But uh, a, a top producing dairy cow is pregnant 75% of her lifetime. So that's uh, kind of a lot of stress on a cow. So we had good quality feed, keeping them good and healthy.
Where would they live when they weren't, uh, you know, in here, being milked? Well, <coughs> when they weren't being milked, we turned them out then in the barn. There's about 80 acres of pasture out there that you can wander around. Down on the east end of the pasture, there's a creek. So they get water down there if they're at that end. And outside of this side of the barn, there's a big cow tank. So if they're up this way, they had water here and water down to out of the creek. And so they were out there every day, before milking, after milking, and at nighttime too. In the wintertime, we tried to keep them out. Cows like 50, 40, 50 degree weather. So we didn't keep them inside till it got like snowy and really bitter cold. Then they were in here, but we turned them out every day for fresh air exercise. And unless it had to be really brutal cold before we kept them in full time. They always had to straw and bedding. Every cow has an individual, every stanchion has an individual drinking cup. So a cow could put its nose in the drink cup, push a thing, and they get water, fresh water, whenever they wanted or needed it. So that's how they got the water when they're here. But uh, we kept. Anytime. Yeah, this automatic gutter cleaner is what it's called. Uh, it has a big heavy duty chain on it, and the slats would help carry the stuff along. The chain, though, has got sprockets on all the ends, so it just make one big circle around the barn. And this is a, like the third system we have in, of course. Manure is going to have acid in it, so it's going to eat it up. But it's a pretty heavy duty chain, but even, no matter how heavy duty the chain is, it's going to eat it up. So, this uh, about every 10 years, 15 years, had to get a new gutter cleaner. But it saved a lot of back work, saved a lot of time, and kept the barn much cleaner. That made the milk inspector happy, and we were always able to ship grade A milk, never had a problem with them. They were always uh, glad to come here and see that things were kept up. Awesome. Anytime. Now, as you know, cows or any animal is going to produce waste or manure. And the cows would come in and put their heads in the stanchions. You could lock them up so they wouldn't be able to roam around. They would stand here, which would work out for them to do their waste thing over the gutter here, what they call a, a gutter. And then in 1968, we installed a gutter cleaner, automatic uh, cleaning of the barn. Throw the switch at the end of the barn. Go, makes one big circle, goes around, dumps it out in the manure spreader. Take 14 minutes to clean the barn. They always scrape off the excess and get everything in the gutter and clean it out. And it's a amazing thing. 14 minutes, barn clean. Prior to that, you it was do it by hand. It, yeah, it was called drive in with a tractor and manure spreader and a shovel and a fork and do it by hand. And because we shipped grade A milk, you had to have the barn clean every day. It was mandatory. A milk inspector could come around to this barn any dairy farm anytime you wanted to inspect the barn, the cows, anything you wanted to. If you didn't pass inspection, you weren't shipping milk. So the barn had to be cleaned every day. Cows cleanliness is, is uh, very important in the dairy business. So could then could you come so anytime. Okay now we're going to talk about the vacuum line system that used to run a milking machine. That creates a vacuum which runs the milking machines and it kind of imitates hand milking. That's that made a big improvement and mechanized farming once they started using milking machines. Before that, a couple, three, four guys would have to milk cows by hand, would probably take 10 minutes per cow. All depends how much milk the cow were producing, of course, how long it took to milk a cow. With this, you put a uh, wash a cow, sanitize the udder, put the milking machine on, and this is the stall cock, and the vacuum line goes around the whole barn, and uh, it ran the milking machines. You put the machine on, you go away to the next cow, do the same thing, you come back to this cow after three or four four minutes, take it off, you're done. And you just keep going down the barn. So we had milk cows about an hour, which probably back in the old days, took uh, three or four hours to milk cows by hand. And it was a lot of, we'll say, stress on the hands and wrists, fingers and all that. So it made it much easier in life to do it the mechanical way. When was this system installed? I can't, we used to have various systems over the year, but this one was plastic pipe, of course. They didn't have that. We started with galvanized pipe. And since I've been alive, and that was 1952 I was born, uh, we've always had milking machines here. So we always milk about 50 cows. Before that, when they're milked by hand, they maybe only had 10, 15 cows, maybe 20. I'm not, I'm not sure on that. But it uh, depends probably on how much help you had, <laughs> how many cows you had. And if you had room for them, too, is another thing. But with the mechanical thing, which now a lot of farmers are going to 200 cows on milking. So it's what, what brand of a milker did you use? We use De Laval milkers. Uh, there's also a Surge and De Laval, like Chevy or Ford, which is better. I don't think it made much difference. They both worked, both did a good job. But our nearest dealer was De Laval up in Hampshire, Illinois. 
But Surge had a school over here not far away, but they only trained dealers. They never had a they never sold equipment or maintain equipment. So it went better for us to deal with deal of Al over Surge because of the closeness to being to the dealer for parts and equipment. And uh, so, they would, the cows would come in here every night or every morning and they'd come in and put their head in the barn stanchion. This is what they call a barn stanchion. Put their head in here and you lock them up. And it would be in here while you milk them. They eat their feed, drink their water. When you're all done milk them, you go along and just release the latch. Then they will back out and go back outside, whether it's morning or night. They're going to go out for the day or going to go out for the nighttime. Great. And anytime. Okay, what we're going to show you now are what they call barn stanchions. A cow would come in. It's wide at the top, narrow at the bottom. They put their head in. And you come along and just lock them up. And when you get all done milking cows, you can release the latch. They can go out, go back outside. They're called barn stanchions. And say with a drink cup there, they have one per two cows. So a cow can get a drink, come in and get its feed. It's always in front of them. And the drink cup's right there. And when the cows went out, they always cleaned the old feed up, got rid of it, brought fresh new feed in. So in the morning or night, when they came in the barn, they had food and back in the stanchion, they'd go. Same cow would go in the same stanchion every time. Okay, this is the vacuum pump which created a vacuum which ran the milking machines. And uh, I, I don't remember what year it was put in. It was here before I was born. But over the years, you have to get new motors, of course, new pumps, and just keep everything updated. And so it's working great. But uh, ran by electricity, the switch was over here. You turn it on at the beginning of milking, and the milking, you turn it off. Now, before electricity was invented, milk was milk from the cow in buckets, and the milk was put in, from the buckets into a milk can, and it was put in a two or two tanks of well water out there that kept the milk cold. Then, then every day the milk get hauled down to Wasco train depot, where to get hauled into Chicago. Every farmer had its own name and permit number and address on the can. So you take your cans down and put them on a the train to come in. Next day they come back, you put your, other, your second set of cans on, and they go in. And getting to the to train depot in Wasco was either an old truck or a wagon, buckboard. In wintertime, it could be a sleigh. They had milk had to get from here to there. After electricity, they had the bulk tank run by electricity, which we have in the other room there. And we sold our milk to Batavia Dairy around 1970 when they went out of business. Uh, we went to Ludwig Dairy up in Elgin. When they went out of business, we shipped to Dean's up in Huntley. So that was the last place our milk went, was Dean's up in Huntley, Illinois. So how much would these uh, hold and how much do they weigh? 
there, the can itself, I would say, weighs 10 to 15 pounds. Uh, it holds eight gallons, and 8.6 pounds makes one gallon of milk. So the weight would be somewhere around 65, 66 pounds. Add the 10 or 15 pounds on, you're up near 80 pounds on a, on a, a full can of milk. And an average cow would pretty much fill one of these up a day, right? Uh, an average cow would, a good producing cow would probably produce about 70 to 100 pounds of milk a day. That was a more accurate measure. That's why they do pounds instead of gallons. So that'd be converted into uh, pounds, uh, from pounds to gallons. And it's 70 pounds, you're talking about one, eight gallons of milk there. Anytime, Dave. Back in, uh, after World War II, things got better and the economy got better and there were more restrictions put on milk. They wanted it safer and cleaner. They went from milk being shipped in milk cans to an electric bulk tank, which is what this is. And it would keep the milk at 38 degrees. The stir would keep the milk stirred occasionally. If it stir ran all the time, you'd have butter, so it would only come on and off according to the temperature. And then the milk truck would come every day and put its uh, hose through that pipe up there and hook up the end of the tank and suck it out. Now there's a dipstick there, you pull that out, it's got numbers on it. You read the numbers, you go to a chart, it will tell you how many pounds of milk you have in there. Pounds of milk is a more accurate reading than gallons of milk. But this is what they call a 300 gallon tank. But it was stainless steel, had to be sterilized every day after the tank was dumped and uh, kept clean. That's another reason why the milk inspectors came around, to make sure everything's clean. Grade A milk had to be sterilized and clean and safe for human consumption. And there we go. Yeah, I mentioned earlier the truck would back up and put a hose in here and suck the milk out. We had no at that point. As my brother mentioned. Okay, you ready? Yep. As my brother mentioned earlier, uh, when the things got better, the economy got better after World War II, a lot of farmers wanted to stay in the milk business, they had to go to the bulk tank and get away from the milk cans. A lot of farmers just said, we're not interested in investing that much money into it. We want to move in a different way. So a lot of them went to beef cattle or hogs. And uh, they kind of got out of the business once they had to start making a larger investment to make the improvements. And when you went to a bulk tank, instead of taking your milk to a train depot, a truck would come here and pick your milk up, put a hose in, hook up the end of the tank, suck it out. Of course, they also have to know how much milk is in here so you can get paid accordingly. And with these tanks, they had what to call a dipstick, which calibrated numbers. You read the numbers where the level of milk is, you go to a chart on the wall, they'll tell you how many pounds of milk you have in, the, in your tank. And they write that down and take it to the dairy plant. And they always took a sample of milk so I got the dairy plant, they could check it and see if there's any problems with your milk of any kind. And if, cause before they dump it, they want to make sure you're dumping clean milk in with clean milk. If your milk was bad for any reason, they would re reject the load. This is the original milk house where you kept the, the milk cans in the well water. Over here is the well that produced the, the water. And then uh, the two water tanks in there, we put them in the water tanks and the cold water would come up right to the top of the neck of the can of milk. Then when the bulk tank was invented and put in with electricity, they put the bulk tank in and they built the building around it. So that little building was not attached to the barn before we'll say 18 or 1931 or so because electricity was put on this farm in 1931. I'm not sure when they bought the bulk tank in, but that'd be shortly after that.
and cut. Yeah, these are the two uh, tanks that held the, the milk cans and the water would come up that pipe from the well and pump in here, then would run into here and fill this up. And then the, any excess water would go, there's a taller pipe that fit in there and go out and fill the water tank. And you can tell the, the milk can sat on the wood slats on the bottom. And a water line, you can see on this old can here, came up to here, and that kept the milk cold. Over there on that wall is uh, the milk can lid holder. And these can, or these pipes were, would use to hold the milk cans upside down so no dirt would get them. Kept, and once you clean them up, sterilize them. And any yeah, what This is what you call a dairy and grain farm. It kept pretty busy all the time. Like I said earlier, when it came to milking cows, it was done twice a day, whether it was Christmas Day or Thanksgiving. You work holidays, and you knew that coming in. We enjoyed it, or I did anyway. My brother, I think, he enjoyed it. And then we always had uh, crops growing for the, for feeding the cattle. So there's always maintenance to be done on on equipment and on uh, buildings. So it was never a ending battle of work. You go outside every day and go to work, and there's always something to do. You never got everything done. It's always something to do every day.